Happy Tuesday, T-Squad. It's your girl, Keisha, a.k.a. Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 13, Episode 10 Review. I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only, not to be taken seriously or literally, meaning my jokes and jones. So if that works for you, then let's get into this review. But before we do, I want to let you guys know that my Real Housewives of New Jersey confessional looks video is up right now. So if you want a good laugh and a good fashion breakdown make sure you check out that video as well as my home tour video where I show you guys my living room my deck my kitchen my sitting room it is up right now so make sure you guys check out those two videos now let's get into tonight's review the episode kicks off with Danielle having her pop up at Envy and it seems like she did a really good job a lot of people seem to buy a lot of her um clothing even though a lot of it looked like the same stuff you can get from like five and below or carters it it really wasn't given what i would have wanted it to give but whatever congratulations to her jen aiden comes to support and they stand around and have a conversation and she asks melissa melissa is she okay with her and dolores being in teresa's wedding and she was like yeah i don't have no problem with it i ain't changed my mind i'm good so then Melissa asked Danielle how she feels about, you know, Rachel since they got into it at the last little event. Danielle was like, you know what? Instead of just saying, you know, Margaret, we were in the conversation together. She just continued to dig at me. She just continued to dig at me. And you know what? What I saw that day was a rat. She's a rat, Melissa. She's a rat. <laughs> I'm like, girl, this is Mob Wives and you are not Drita. Simmer down, love. First of all, y'all didn't have that conversation together where she was talking about Margaret with you. You were the one talking about Margaret and she was just sitting there. Mm hmm. OK, yeah. Uh huh. She didn't play along with you and side with you with what you were saying. And you're mad because she went back and told the true tea. That's what you're mad about. And then you sit up here talking about she just continues to take digs at you. You the one start with her. You the one that has something to get off your chest at the little coffee thing last, you know, in last week's episode. Like that girl didn't do nothing to you. She was sitting there with a little bun in her head and her little flowery dress and wasn't paying you no attention, love. And then for you to call her a rat. Girl, if that's the case, every last one of you are rats because all of y'all go back and whisper to the other person what the other person said. So have several. We then see Jen Aiden at home packing for the Ireland trip and she's in her bedroom talking to Bill about the trip and brings up Margaret. And Jim was like, you know, she's doing things to me that is affecting my family. You know, my daughter now wants to be a love therapist. How am I not supposed to be mad at that, Bill? How? <laughs> And I'm like, you just continue to blame Margaret for everything wrong in your life. And this is where she contradicts herself, first of all, and then exposes the real true tea when she then brings up her and Bill going to therapy. And she was like, you know, do you want to participate more with the kids? And Bill was like, of course. So Jen was like, but saying yes and actually doing it are different things, Bill. <laughs> so Bill was like, so I'm going to drop my hobbies and golf. And Jen was like, you don't golf. You know what your hobby is? Hanging in the pool house for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and Bill was like, so I shouldn't live my true self. And he was like, she was like, I'm just fighting for your time and my family and the kids. That's what I'm fighting for, Bill. That's what I'm fighting for. And it's like, okay, you want to sit up here and blame Marge for your daughter wanting to be a love therapist instead of blaming your husband for cheating on you. First of all, it was going to come out sooner or later because once again, you started with Marge with coming at her your first season about her having an extramarital affair. You kept on digging and digging and digging and digging at that lady and she finally punched you in the gut back and now you can't handle it. Your kids was gonna find out one day that they daddy cheated on you. First of, and then second of all, your children already know that there's issues in the home with the fact that your husband stay in the pool house and don't want to be bothered with you. So you don't think that your kids peeping game and seeing that there is discord in the house, that my daddy is never present 
and wants to be around us. That's why your daughter want to be a love therapist because she sees that y'all marriage is not right. That ain't got nothing to do with Marge exposing you last season. And if you didn't want your secrets to be exposed, you would think that you would have came onto this show not trying to bother other people about their marriages. So look in the mirror, love, and stop trying to blame Marge for everything. The ladies land in Dublin and on the van ride to the castle, Jen Fessler admits to boning James Gandolfini from The Sopranos back in the day. And she said it didn't happen just once, honey. It happened multiple times. She was obsessed with him. He was the one that got away. And all the ladies are just shocked. Like, oh my God, you had sex with James Gandolfini? And I'm like, this was before he was the James Gandolfini. I, I want y'all to understand that. And then y'all acting like this man was Brad Pitt. He was an overweight <laughs> man with a receding hairline. Like, let's anybody could have banged James Gandolfini. Let's let's just be honest, okay? But the ladies get to the castle and it is beautiful. Oh my God, it was built in the 17th century. And I just love stuff like that. So I would have been walking all around that house just looking at stuff and, you know, just seeing the portraits and all of that stuff. I love that era in life. Oh my goodness, I love it. So after everybody gets their rooms, the ladies sit for lunch. Dolores reminds everybody that, yo, we are not in Jersey anymore. We got to act like we got some decorum and coops, okay? We can't be screaming and yelling and stuff like that. But then she brings up what happened at the coffee reading. And I'm like, you telling these people to behave themselves, but then you kick stuff off by bringing up an argument that just happened. Most of the girls feel like Jen tampered with the psychic and was telling her stuff. And we all know she did. We didn't even need tonight's episode as proof because we knew that she talked to that lady. So Jen not denies it, of course, until Teresa was like, you know, I asked Jennifer, what did she tell her? And she was like, I only told her me and Margaret had a fight, you know, and I was just like, Louie, Louie. <laughs> So Jen and her confession was like, you know, yes, I called the other night before and we got into a conversation. And when she said endorsement, I was like, damn, did I tell her that? And it was like, girl, we knew that you had ran your big baboon lips to that lady. And Teresa so dumb that she told on you like she going to throw you under the bus every time you nincompoop. So Jen was like, I didn't tell her about the Laura thing, though, Margaret. I really didn't. There's a lot of shit that Al said that I would just never repeat. I would never, would never. And Margaret was like, so you said stuff to Melissa? And Jen was like, I was just telling her to look out. And Marge was like, for what? For what? And Jen was like, for some of the things that Laura said. The woman said a lot of things, a lot of crazy things about you. And I was just telling her just to be aware. And so Danielle was like, well, what did she say? And Jill was like, she said things that I would never repeat. I would never repeat it. Never. On my kids, I would never do it. So Melissa was like, well, I want to know what she said. But Jen refuses to say what was said because she just says that it's just so despicable that she just could not say. And I'm just like, girl, just the fact that you keep on bringing it up lets all of us know, the viewers included, that you're going to repeat what was said eventually. Like, you once again, you're doing Teresa's dirty work and don't even realize it. Or maybe you do realize it and just don't care. But once again, Teresa then reeled you into some foolishness and puppeteering you like she's done everybody else in the past to do her dirty work. And you doing it for like a complete idiot. So before the ladies head out that night for Teresa's bachelorette party, Danielle and Jen are in the room talking and Danielle wants to know what was said because she's just dying to know at this point. And I'm like, for the same person to sit up here and get mad when people had questions about her situation with her brother. You sure is nosy when it come to other people's stuff. Like all of y'all are such hypocrites on this show. I mean, not even just on this show, on all the Housewives shows. So Jen was like, you know, I can't say. I just can't say it, Danielle. It's really bad. I just can't say it. 
So Danielle was like, you said everything else. And I was like, <laughs> you better tell it. So Jen was like, because that shit is petty. There's like a family involved and something very similar was done to me last year. And it did not. And it ended up being true. So I don't want to be a hypocrite and do something that's almost extremely similar that was done to me. She made me and Teresa swear, swear on our lives that we would not say a thing. And it's like at this point, you've already said it in a roundabout way. You've already said that it has something to do with infidelity with one of the women in this group. And you would think after the whole fiasco with Jackie, when she tried to out Evan as a cheater, that she would stop. It's like you went after Marge for having uh, an affair. Then you tried, you and Teresa tried to make it seem like Evan was cheating on Jackie. Then you got exposed, <laughs> finally, and you went crying under a rock and still a season later, still boohoo crying about it after you have went after two marriages already. And now here you are doing it again. So at this point, you better not have nothing else to say about this whole bill situation, love, because you literally are about to turn around and do exactly what you said you did not want to do and that you weren't going to do. But we already knew that you were going to do it. So Danielle was like, so it's about Melissa. And Jen sighs like, oh my God, like I just, like you're just putting a gun to my head and making me say it, but okay. And so Danielle was like, what is it? So Jen was like, Laura was telling me, Margaret told her some rumor that somebody that works with both of them opened up, you know, the backseat of a car and he saw Melissa in the backseat with a guy. The person that claimed to see it told Margaret they were making out. I mean, but maybe there was a one night thing and it's over. Who knows? So Danielle was like, so Margaret is the one saying it. And Jen was like, yes, it was Margaret. I mean, she was reveling in it, honey. She couldn't wait to put that out there finally. So Danielle was like, so she really does have arsenal on everybody. And Jen was like, Teresa was so pissed because she believes it. But don't say anything. Don't say anything. Girl, first of all, you swore you would never repeat it. Then when somebody barely twists your arm, you not only repeated it, but then repeated it on camera for the whole world to see, but then have the nerve to say, but don't say nothing to nobody. And then on top of that, y'all once again coming with this Melissa cheating on Joe story. And we all know where this is coming from Teresa, we've been there, done that. How many times are you going to go after this girl saying that she cheating on your brother? Like, if you want to, your brother, just say it. Because that's what it's given at this point. Like, please, please, because this is weird how you keep on attacking this girl and accusing her of cheating on this man and all of this type of stuff. But when you was out there dating that little young dude, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when you was out there dating that little young boy, didn't nobody out you about it. Everybody kept your little secret when you was denying it. Thomas, he was just holding my hand, walking me to the car. But okay, Teresa. Okay, girl. All right. Nobody threw you under the bus for that. But at the same token, nobody believes this crap about Melissa cheating on Joe. Girl, be quiet. It's so tired. It's so played. For you to be so happy in your love bubble, you keep on attacking this girl and your brother's marriage. Like, oh my God, if you don't propose to your brother and just be done with it, because this is sickening. And Jen Aiden ain't no better. That's why your nose is fucked up because <laughs> you's a nosy, rotten heifer. And you don't care about nobody else's marriage, but yet and still you want people to care about yours. And then you want to get mad when somebody finally hit your ass back. You keep on fucking with people and then get mad when they finally ragtag your ass. You are 100% out of line and out of pocket for repeating that shit and then repeating it on television. Like, I don't understand how Melissa ain't boom bopped both of y'all in the face. Because y'all keep on playing with her and her marriage and her family. And you want to sit up here and cry wolf about, this is my family and it affected my kids. And then literally in the same breath, in the same scene, Thompson, you know, this affects people's family. Kids are involved. And two seconds later, well, girl, Laura said that somebody that worked for her and Marge saw to, uh, Melissa in the backseat of a car kissing somebody. 
Girl, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You don't care about Melissa. You don't care about nobody else's family or kids. And first of all, let's just say this conversation did take place between Marge and her then best friend, Laura, somebody that she grew up with. They did have that conversation where this so-called worker came and told them that he saw Melissa kissing somebody in the backseat of the car. Okay, and, and it was a conversation between two best friends. She didn't go and repeat it to nobody else. She didn't go running and telling everybody in the group. She didn't go and tell everybody in Jersey. She didn't go and put it on national television. You did. There was a conversation between two best friends. And then one of the best friends decided to become an op just to get on the television show because it was revealed tonight on Watch What Happens Live because Melissa was on there, that this same girl, Laura, tried out to be on Housewives three times but got rejected. Like, come on, people. She was having a conversation between her and her friend. You know, this worker came. I don't know who the worker told. I don't know if the worker told Marge first or the girl Laura first. But regardless, they had a phone conversation or a conversation between two friends. So the hell what she didn't say that Melissa did it she didn't accuse Melissa she didn't try to blackmail Melissa you and Teresa are y'all are such hypocrites and I don't understand these Teresa and Jen fans that don't see what is going on on this show like come on like what so the ladies then head out for dinner for Teresa's bachelorette party they go to this restaurant and the wedding comes up. I'm so sick of this wedding. Jesus Christ, I'm so sick of it. And then another thing I want to clear up about the whole Dina situation. For those of you that were in the comment sections uh, last week saying, Dina and Teresa are fine. She didn't want to be in the wedding because it was being filmed. Let me tell you something about how the entertainment world works. <laughs> When she was asked to be a part of the wedding months prior, the deal had already been made for it to be on television. It wasn't something that Bravo said three weeks prior that, oh, yeah, we're going to film your wedding and we're going to give you notice three weeks before. No, the contract had already been signed, sealed, delivered. Money had already been divvied up, rights and all of that stuff. You just don't do that on a whim a few weeks before the wedding. So when she agreed to be a bridesmaid, Dina already knew that it was going to be on television. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with what Joe said that Dina's man got into it with Louie. That's why she wasn't a part of the wedding. And that is why her and Teresa aren't really that cool right now today. Y'all can be delusional all y'all want, but I'm going to keep it real and keep it funky because I ain't got no skin in the game. But like, just be real and just be honest with the situation, people. So anywho, um, the wedding conversation comes up again. And I'm so sick of this dang on wedding. I'll be glad when it is over. Jen Festival asks what made Teresa ask Dolores and Jen to be bridesmaids. And Teresa was like, because they've been supportive of me and Louie. You know, I was nervous to ask because I didn't want to hear another thing from my brother like with your mom, Melissa. <laughs> and... Melissa was like, but when they asked, you said there was history there. That's why you didn't want to invite my mother. So Teresa was like, but you know, back in the day, yeah. Melissa was like, me and you back in the day didn't speak. And here come Jen Aiden putting her beak in the situation and was like, yeah, but you were through obligation. And Margaret said, you just said she was invited for as obligation. She was like, uh-uh. Jen and Mar, Jen Fessler and Mar was like, uh-uh, run that back. Back that up. Uh-uh. So once again, when Jen needs to be checked, Teresa just sits there like a deer in headlights and says nothing because she agrees. She agrees with this. Once again, this is an example of how Teresa never checks Jen for talking to her family members crazy. Because first of all, don't speak for me. Who, who telling you to talk for me? You know what I'm saying? This is between me and my sister-in-law. Let us talk. You fall back. Worry about your own situation. But Melissa, I mean, Teresa just sits there until Melissa was like, don't talk for her because you're actually making it worse for her. And then Teresa's like, let me speak. I don't need you talking for me. I don't need you talking for me. <sighs> and so Teresa's like, I invited a lot of moms. So I just wish my brother would have just told me because I would have just been like, okay, okay, Joe. 
And so Melissa was like, I think he would just expect that you would invite her. And Teresa was like, I didn't think of it. <laughs> but you thought of inviting Margaret Sr. after the fact, though. You thought about that, but you didn't think about inviting Melissa's mom. But you invite Margaret's mom and you don't even really like Margaret. And you know the only reason why you invited Margaret mom was to stick it to Teresa and Joe. I mean, Melissa and Joe even more. Like, <laughs> The games, people, the games. That's why I don't even understand why they even um, allow Teresa to get underneath their skin. Because, like, she plays games that toddlers play. Like, these silly mind games. Like, it's just so silly. And here go Dolores and her confession. So, I get it. I get it. Just call. Melissa, call. Joe, call. Don't talk about it. Just call. And it's like, Dolores, you barely got an invite. You weren't even invited to her engagement party because Dina was invited. So that lets you know once again where your place is in her life and where she ranks you as far as friendship goes. That Dina will always be placed over you. And if Dina did, didn't back out of the wedding, you wouldn't have even been asked to be a bridesmaid. So you need to sit down somewhere because you just a follower too and a ding dong. Ugh. Overall though, tonight's episode was frustratingly good. I'm going to give it an A. The ladies are bringing it. Um, y'all let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell button. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.